Hello, I'm the Math 235 lecture for Waterloo SOS. My name is Muto, and today I'll be giving you a demo lecture of what on the real inner product. But you should remember that in Math 235 we study the complex inner product, which is slightly different. And if you want to know more about it, you should come to our review sessions. So our agenda today is to talk about the dot product and then move on to define what an inner product is and finish up with an example or two. So when we are talking about the dot product, we have a specific ve vector space in mind. All right. So let's write down dot product. In fact, I have an even more specific space in mind than usual. So I will only be considering, say, R2. Then a dot product on R2 we know looks like this. Say x, we take a vector x1, x2 in R2, dot it with another vector y1 and y2. We define it to be x1 times y1 plus x2 times y2. Now that's just defining a function of two vectors and giving us a real number. What we notice is that it satisfies some specific properties, namely that of symmetry. And what does symmetry mean? It means that if I flip the x and y here, and my dot product doesn't change. How do I show that? It's just saying, well, x1, y1 plus y, x2, y2 is the same as y1, x1 plus y2, x2. This we know from dealing with real numbers. And that is exactly what I mean by y1, y2 dotted with x1 and x2. And that's what I mean by symmetry. All right. The next big property that it satisfies is that of linearity. Strictly speaking, it's bilinearity. But for all means, we'll just consider the first one. By linear, what I mean by linearity is that if I take a linear combination, it's a lambda times x plus um, mu times y, and dot it with the vector z that will have to break up as lambda times x dotted with z plus mu times y dotted with z. From experience with the dot product, we know that this is true as well. And the third big property is that of non-negativity. So what that means is that if I take a vector, say, x in R2, and dot it with itself. x dot x, well, that better be bigger than or equal to 0. And the only time it can be 0, and so x dot x would be 0 if and only if x itself is 0, which I'll write down here. That's visible. All right. Now the idea of an inner product is to generalize this for any vector space. So let's start with our second topic, the inner product. In this case, we consider a general vector space, say V. So V would be a vector space. And elements of V, I'll label them, say, as V, W, and say, so u, v, and w are elements of the vector space. So they're vectors. Now, an inner product then would be defined to be a function, which we write with a fancy curly bracket, that takes two vectors and gives us a real number. So it takes, say, a vector v and another one w. And the inner product, the way we write it like this, is just a real number. And the defining properties of inner product are also the same as that of dot product. In particular, that it will have to satisfy symmetry, which means that the inner product of V and W is the same as inner product of W and V. And linearity, which means lambda times U plus mu times V, inner product with W, would have to be 
lambda times mu in the product with w plus mu times b in a product with w. Again, word of caution, these things change a little bit if you go into complex inner products. And the last property of non-negativity, which I'll both move into this board. That simply says, states that if I take a vector b and take its inner product with itself, then we better get bigger than or equal to zero. And it will be zero if and only if the vector itself is zero. So these three properties, these three properties and the way we define the function together define what an inner product is. And the vector space V with an inner pro such an inner product is called an inner product space. So let's give you some example. We know for sure that second degree polynomials, the space of second degree polynomials, P2, is a vector space. So let's say I take up and the two elements, P and Q of P2. That means they're polynomials of order two, of degree two. And then I define my inner product to be, or I define a function to be this. P with Q, the way I've calculated it as P times zero, the p evaluated at 0 and q evaluated at 0 plus p evaluated at 1 multiplied at by q evaluated at 1. All right. So this is a real number, this is a real number, that's a real number, and that's a real number. All right. I'll be a bit more explicit, but what I'd show in this example is that this space cannot be an inner product space. As in particular that this function here is not an inner product. I assume that symmetry is quite obvious right here because, well, if you change the Q's and the P's here and the Q's and the P's here, it doesn't matter, but which automatically changes the Q and the P there. And I would not go into talking about the linearity, but what I want to show is that this function definitely does not satisfy the non-negativity. How do I show that? Say I take a particular polynomial given by P of X is X squared minus X. So this is perfectly good second degree polynomial. Notice that P of 0 is 0 minus 0, which is 0. And P of 1 is 1 minus 1, which is also 0. So then the inner product of P with itself, well, that's just 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0, which is a big 0. However, the polynomial that we started with is not the 0 polynomial. So this tells us that, therefore, the function is not an inner product. And finally, I'll leave you with an example to work out yourself. So it's an exercise, which is basically if you take say the vector space to be that of two by two matrices. Let's say A and B are two two by two matrices and I'll define the inner product between A and B to be, or a function on A and B to be, the trace of A transpose B. And I would like you to show by yourself, think about it, it's pretty easy to show that this is indeed an inner product. So then, what we have covered here is the dot product, and then we have shown how it extends to define a, an inner product, and I have shown you some examples. I hope you have enjoyed the video.